Looking for a great deal on a great stock? Does a market smashing 4% plus yield sound good to you? Like the idea of collecting a dividend that keeps growing like clockwork? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is providing people with life-saving medical treatments. Major pharmaceutical companies make a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. Not difficult to understand why. After all, healthcare is a non-discretionary expense. If you're sick, you're going to do whatever it takes to get better. And that means plenty of profits and dividends for shareholders of companies like this one. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I want to share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Gilead Sciences Inc., which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Gilead Sciences Inc., stock ticker GILD, is a biopharmaceutical company that develops and markets therapies to treat a variety of life-threatening diseases. Founded in 1987, Gilead is now an $84 billion by market cap drug colossus that employs more than 13,000 people. The company's three primary disease areas are viral diseases, inflammatory diseases, and oncology. Gilead focuses heavily on HIV and hepatitis B and C. Their HIV franchise accounted for approximately 70% of fiscal year 2020 sales. Bictarvi, which treats HIV is their most important drug, making up about 29% of total fiscal year 2020 sales. Geographically, the U.S. is by far their biggest market. The U.S. accounted for approximately 74% of fiscal year 2020 sales. Gilead has been in some ways a victim of its own success. That's in part because they developed Savaldi, a cure for hepatitis C. When you cure people rather than simply treat them, that naturally leads to less product sales down the line as those cured people stop needing medicine. In addition, there's somewhat narrow focus on diseases like HIV that impact a relatively small percentage of the population also limits their possible customer pool. So while Gilead should be applauded for providing life-saving treatments to people that desperately need them, investors have had to be a bit more patient with Gilead than the average pharma company. Making it easier to remain patient has been the large and growing dividend they pay to shareholders. Gilead has increased their dividend for seven consecutive years. The three-year dividend growth rate of 9.4% shows the level of growth they're capable of delivering. And that's paired with a market beating yield of 4.2%. That's in the range of what many utilities and REITs are yielding right now, which is unusual for a stock like this. I think that underscores its income appeal. This yield, by the way, is 70 basis points higher than the stock's own five-year average yield. And and the dividend is protected by a low payout ratio of 40.1% based on midpoint guidance for this fiscal year's adjusted earnings per share. These dividend metrics are very nice with the yield, growth, and payout ratio checking all the right boxes. Looking at business growth, Gilead increased its revenue from $8.4 billion in fiscal year 2011 to $24.7 billion in fiscal year 2020. That's a compound annual growth rate of 12.8%. Great top line growth. However, it's important to keep in mind that revenue most recently peaked in fiscal year 2015 at over $32 billion for that year. So Savaldi was approved by the FDA in late 2013, which led to a burst in sales for Gilead over the following few years. Earnings per share increased from $1.77 to $7.09 adjusted over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 16.7%. It's a fantastic 10-year growth picture that has to be viewed within the context of mid-decade explosive growth, which has recently cooled. A lot of excess bottom line growth was driven by share repurchases. The outstanding share count is down by 20% over the last decade. Looking forward, CF 
FRA's forecasting that Gilead will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 2% over the next three years. I last looked at CFRA's three-year earnings per share growth forecast for Gilead back in May, at which time it was 6%. It's odd to see the forecast change so dramatically in such a short period of time, despite Gilead printing a very solid Q2 report in July that saw 21% year-over-year revenue growth, general improvement across the board, and upped fiscal year 2021 sales and adjusted earnings per share guidance. In addition, while the three-year growth forecast has been lowered, CFRA has simultaneously increased their 12-month target price on the stock. And I'm not sure how you rationalize that. The pipeline is strong here with 51 clinical stage programs. Gilead has also broadened itself out into oncology, most notably and most recently with the $21 billion acquisition of Immunomedics. Key cancer drug Trodelvi received FDA approval in April 2020, and this drug is expected to do $3.5 $5 billion in annual sales by 2026. Now, I will say that Gilead has temporarily benefited from increased sales of Vecluri branded remdesivir to treat COVID-19. Still, taking a longer view of the business, I think they're capable of much more than low single-digit bottom line growth. This is a company that's doing triple the revenue and double the free cash flow they were doing a decade ago on 80% of the share float. I don't have super high expectations for Gilead simply due to their narrow focus, but I don't see mid-single-digit earnings per share and dividend growth as a difficult hurdle for them to clear. And with a 4% plus starting yield, that's nothing to shake your fist at. Moving over to the balance sheet, the financial position is good. The balance sheet has deteriorated in recent years with Gilead seeking out growth through acquisitions, but their financial position is not weak. The long-term debt to equity ratio of 1.7 looks high at first glance, but it's more a function of low common equity than high debt. The interest coverage ratio is not applicable for fiscal year 2020. That's due to unusually volatile gap earnings. The interest coverage ratio for fiscal year 2019 though was over six, indicating no issues with servicing debt. Their interest expense has not substantially increased year over year. Unsurprisingly, profitability is vigorous. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 21.5% and annual return on equity of 29.3%. The company is fundamentally sound, bordering on excellent, but a sales collapse from curing HCV caused the stock to start also collapsing around the summer of 2015, and the stock is actually down over the last five years. Expectations are low, Revenue's on the upswing and the portfolio is broadened out. I think there's a lot to like about that setup. And with the economies of scale, IP, patents, R&D, inelastic demand for products, and an established relationship with partners, the company does benefit from durable competitive advantages. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. I view all three of these risks as elevated within the pharma space. The slowing HCV market and incoming generics for HIV threaten the company's sales base. There's integration risk with immunomedics with pressure on Trodelvi to perform. And there's pipeline risk. New blockbuster drugs must overcome slowing sales from older drugs. With these risks stated, I still think there's a long-term investment case that can be made. That's especially true with the valuation being as low as as it is. The price earnings ratio is 16.6 and that's quite low in this market. Moreover, the forward price earnings ratio using midpoint guidance for this fiscal year's adjusted earnings per share is only 9.6 and the yield as noted earlier is significantly higher than its own five-year average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 9% discount rate to account for the high yield and a long-term dividend growth rate of 5%. This is the mid-single digit long-term growth I discussed earlier. I'm not putting undue expectations on the business here. There's nothing to indicate that Gilead can't perform at this admittedly middling level for the coming years. If anything, Gilead should be able to do quite a bit better than this, but I'd rather err on the side of caution as Gilead has had some issues over the last few years with managing its drug portfolio. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $74.55. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because the business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates Gilead as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $81. CFRA rates Gilead as a three-star hold with a 12-month target price of $70. I came out somewhere in the middle this time around, averaging the three numbers out, gives us a final valuation of $75.18, which would indicate the stock is possibly 11% undervalued. 
Here's the bottom line guys, Gilead Sciences Inc. is a high quality pharmaceutical company that is set up to do well despite low expectations with a market beating 4% plus yield, inflation beating dividend growth, a low payout ratio, and the potential that shares are 11% undervalued, dividend growth investors should consider loving this unloved stock. And now for a special news announcement, Microsoft Corporation stock ticker MSFT just reported a blockbuster Q1 blowing past expectations on both the top line and bottom line. They beat revenue expectations by more than $1 billion. The highlight for me, Azure and other cloud services revenue growth of 50% year over year. This is one of the best businesses in the entire world. If you don't already have it in your portfolio, you really ought to reconsider that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time. <laughs>